Welcome to Mr. Bros. Show, episode 236. We are live. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. We got a uh, full panel tonight for Girlie's backstage getting his uh, dress on. And uh, everybody else is here. Nation 420. Red's here. I'm here. I just woke up from a nap. And Spartan's here. Of course. Not here for long, at least not in America. I'm here for dinner. Becca's, I hear Becca back there. Hi, Becca. Becca's here too. And of course, we got yeah. everybody in chat already waiting. Becca's making dinner. I know. I'm excited. If Spartan's not excited, I'm really excited for his upcoming trip. I'm super stoked for him. Oh, I'm getting excited, I guess. I, I'm more worried about being in a plane for yeah, a long I mean, time. I'm really yeah. getting on that one. I hate to fly, so that, that's the only thing that keep me from going. Yeah. So, it won't be so bad going there because I go from Detroit to Philadelphia. And then from Philadelphia, I, I, I go seven and a half hours in the air, but it's at night. It's at like I, it takes off at like after 8 o'clock at night, a little after 8. Okay. So it'll be at nighttime, so maybe I'll just fall asleep. Yeah. And then I get old movies or something maybe to watch too, or I don't know. Yeah, most of them have. I mostly watch like I watch regular airlines have them free movies. I probably wouldn't watch a movie going there. Maybe on the way back because going there is nighttime, and when I get there, it's going to be morning. Yeah. So it's yeah, like but a, you know, you might need a movie to get to sleep. I don't go to bed at eight. I don't go to sleep with lights in my face, man. It's I not know. like that. It's not like that bright. It, everything dims once you get up and not, uh, on a night flight. It's gonna dim really dim because I'm gonna take my beanie and just put it all over, all the way down over my face. Yeah. You can ask for a sleep mask. We give you sleep masks. That's it, dude. Sleep mask. Get some some. Uh, I'd buy your own. They'll charge you. I can't say enough about uh, noise canceling headphones. And a neck pillow. Oh, neck pillow too. That's that's smart. It's worth the 15 bucks. Well, I'm leaving the tomorrow. Club. I don't think I'm going to get all of that shit. You can get it all at the airport if you got some cash money. You can, you can, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to buy noise-canceling headphones at the fucking airport. Maybe, yeah, they're not going to be maybe cheap. the head pillow. The head pillows are 15 bucks. You buy two for like 20 I don't know what you're going to do with the second one, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. <laughs> you never know what they're good for. You're gonna have fun, man. He's right though. They do dim those flights like overnight and uh water. You might need to sit on it on the way home. <coughs> you can sleep in a chair, it's pretty easy to sleep on a plane. If you can't sleep in a chair, we'll just take a lot of edibles. My yeah. only problem is the left and right. Like you have to you know, you got people to memorize you got like No, I'm only gonna have one person because I got I picked my seats. I got an aisle seat. No. I want the person on the right. Yeah, so if you fall this way you're in the aisle. That's fine. You don't want to fall that way. <laughs> If you fall this way, you're on that person. That's what I'm saying. Who, who <laughs> falls? I just lean back. That's what? that's what the neck pillow is for. I need, I need something like that. <laughs> I have a neck pillow, but it wasn't. It wasn't. So you need two neck this. pillows. That's why I buy two neck pillows. <laughs> you, need yeah. a, you need a two neck pill, pillow deal. That's what you need it. I guess. Get that but... long Egyptian neck. That's yeah. why. Yeah. Like, goes with the window yeah. seat. Yeah, that way I have the wall, and that's ungodly. Yeah, I was like, I don't do the, I can't do the seat because now I'm trapped and I got two fucking. Yeah, yeah well, I'm, yeah, I'm, that is the negative part about it. And then when God. you're leaving, if you're not like somebody who's smart and like Just get knows, up like girl. understands the pattern, yeah, like to leave, then you you're stuck waiting. I'm not even gonna have a carry on. I've just got a one check. Oh, nice. One check bag. I'm not gonna carry shit on. I'm just. I mean, I'll have a book in my hand. I got my uh, The Hobbit. Bring in that, and then uh, my probably my charger for my phone in my pocket, and that's it. You should bring your magic cards in case somebody challenges you internationally. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to tell them. I just You'd have to represent our entire country. Just slap um, that back down, USA. Yeah, USA. yeah, USA. Yeah, that's yeah, what happens when he pulls it out. It's got a little chip in it. <laughs> so, yeah. but it. It'll be cool. It'll be real neat. It's a big event. Like that is a big European cannabis event. Everyone. Yeah, we're doing. Do so. We're doing three events at least. So we're doing Spanibus. We're doing the International Cannabis Business Conference, which is right before yep. Spanibus, and then we're doing the, which is after cannabis or Spanibus, is the uh, Legends of Hashish. 
Yeah, that's yeah. neat. And we got a hotel all together. So it'll be me, uh, Heston from Floor Farm, and uh, Marcus, BC Bowman, uh, all together. So it's going to be cool to hang with those guys. Nice. One bed, that's weird. No, we got three separate rooms. That's a weird question to ask, but yes, we have three separate I rooms. Think one king would be you got in together. <laughs> I was like, I would hope so. <laughs> That's weird to assume that. That's just weird. Hey, it's I, Europe. It's Europe. Yeah. yeah. I was I was looking at rooms recently for uh, the Hash Bash Cup, and I don't know if I stumbled upon like one of those airs in the this <laughs> the ether or something, but. Uh, you know, it's happened before, I guess, but I found uh, like the best room possible at one of these hotels for only nine dollars more than like a standard king room. <laughs> and so I booked it. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> it is way too big for what we need, but it was nine dollars more. Is that the same hotel too? No, no, no. no. Uh, oh. So as a vendor, like we have a, a room there or whatever, but. It's uh, it's so it's just so smoky, guys. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. There's no way you could probably sleep properly. Not yeah. We've done it before. It's uh, gonna, your lungs are gonna die. Yeah, dude, it was a lot. It was a lot to ingest over a 72 hour period or whatever. <laughs> it's just in the air circulation system, just feeding. Yeah, and it's not all like fire, like you know, everyone at this panel is bringing to the table. It's yeah. a lot of a lot of booth too. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the kind of stuff that people hit with a blowtorch and blast it through a uh, a leaf blower. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, they're walking yeah. around with those and stuff, that. and yeah, it's fun. It's not enough fire alarms, one night. <laughs> yeah. So you guys won't see me next Sunday or Monday. Are you gonna do any uh, live streaming or anything? I know it's gonna be a busy thing, so it's kind of probably like, kind of hard to yeah. I know I went down to my uh, phone carrier uh, Verizon and uh, for $20 more a month, I went on to like an international plan that gives me pretty much the same plan I have now, but I can do it over there. Nice. So it's not like I, I didn't have the, like it won't cost me anymore to do so, but I, yeah. I, I don't know that I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do when I get into the airport at Barcelona and after I get my luggage is uh, look for a shop to buy it to, to find a converter. That's the one thing I forgot to get is the, because uh, I'll just bring my charger. I can plug it into the converter. And if I can't find the converter, I can just buy a charger there. I was going to say, they'll have both at the airport, just like they have those neck pills. It's like the same store. You know what I mean? Like they just, yeah. especially the international flights. <laughs> what is Becca trying to do? What is she trying to prove? <laughs> snuggling. She's, She's just trying snuggling. Trying that big old dog around. <laughs> he's huge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's remember he's... the puppy that, <laughs> that Becca held. <laughs> like two weeks ago. What the heck? November, yeah. I mean January first, and now he's the a same monster. dog, guys. <laughs> so fucking fast. You guys all got to meet him. That was cool. Oh, oh. Yeah. I guess you guys all met him already, actually, except for Growly. You really met him at the fudge. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've seen him a couple times at the fudge. Times. I'm so glad. He likes to uh, floss his teeth with my beard, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> both times now. Immediately. Just kind of. <laughs> Shoes on beards. He's just about ready for bed. He grabs my beard and just pulls on it. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Say hi. I wonder if that's a, a boy thing. Because my, uh, my daughter didn't do that to me really much. She didn't pull on my beard. But my son, man. He's yeah, beard. he's kind of over it now, but he was pulling on it like so hard, so hard. Just I can't wait to have one of these. Yeah, it's now he thinks my belly hair is funny for some reason. That's funny. <laughs> so I, I've got to say, guys, I uh, ever since putting my uh, plants on that irrigation system because you know I took that little vacation, um, I've noticed such a massive increase in volume <laughs> and like it like just noticeable to the naked eye obviously i haven't harvest, harvested or anything but i'm staring at these clementine that are like i don't know how to describe it uh they're not quite the size of a mason jar but they're getting there you know what i mean uh and so is your watering frequency or the watering quantity let's say if you if you could knew the total amount of water you consumed in a day has that changed from the way you were watering to when you've you've put in the irrigation i think it has 
I would assume it has increased just because I'm giving them more. Well, I'm giving them nearly the same amount consistently every day, like bottom line. Um, but some of them, and particularly these Clementine, are drinking more than the irrigation system's feeding them. So I'm actually adding more water to them right now, like every almost every other day. <laughs> uh, I will say, though, while they're in 10-gallon pots, I believe, maybe 15, I didn't fill them up all the way because I am re reusing the soil. And so they're only filled up about half to two thirds of the way full of these pots. And I think that maybe is probably why they're drinking a little bit more than normal. Um, but, but it's not, it's not like, you know, it's, it's probably like seven gallons of, of soil versus like 10 gallons, like the rest of them. I don't know. It's, uh, it's nice to see though. <laughs> I'm trying to think what day I'm at with those. It definitely is like when things like that happen, you try to figure out like, okay, what do I do to keep doing this? <laughs> right, right. And I, I mean, honestly, they're definitely in fresh soil. It's not a reused soil run, um, but they are half full. I was on top of it again with the feedings and everything. So I think that's part of it. Um, I've been, haven't had any, any real issues with equipment other than the dehumidifier leaking <laughs> while it's gone, which is what it, maybe the extra humidity helped. I don't know. Little humidity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really supposed to be operating at that 68, 69% humidity, and I just am too scared to do it. <laughs> when you were hand watering, was it inconsistent at all? Would, would you go in there at different times of the day to potentially forget a, or, or just miss a water just because you, you, you knew that the plants could take, take it anything like certainly that. i mean definitely red like I, I knew i could push things a little further i i definitely didn't feed them every single day um it definitely wasn't it was a consistent amount of water when they got fed you know what i mean yeah. um and it wasn't like super infrequent or super off but yeah timings weren't always the same so yeah in certain comparison to a irrigation system that's just on a timer like i mean yeah it's I was super inconsistent compared to that for sure. I think that there's something with that consistency, potentially dissolved oxygen from the reservoir being entered into the soil. So just, just small little things like that. Um, I will say while it takes six days or so to get through these reservoirs at the rate I'm feeding them, I, I actually have no <laughs> circulation or air stones or anything like that in these reservoirs. They just get turned on and turned off once a day and so that water really isn't it's probably it's still needs just water you'll still it is just water though yes yeah so it's uh ro water you'll still have a different yeah, ro water so it's even cleaner <laughs> you'll have different levels of, of uh bacteria and things like that doing different things creating anaerobic environments and such in the soil and not so much in the and honestly, guys, you know, now that I think about it, my fungus snap population has dwindled significantly, too, um, to the point where I haven't even applied anything since January, I believe, like uh, in terms of nematodes or predator mites or anything. You know, I don't use any sprays or anything like that. But in terms of the IPM, I don't think I've bought anything since the beginning of the year. And nice. I, it's it's particularly in flower. I've really seen like pretty much nothing. There's still some in veg. Maybe that's just because it's a little more crowded in there, but um, I don't know. Yeah, things are, I guess things are just overall generally pretty healthy right now. And I, I the only thing I think that I've changed is that irrigation system. So it's just consistently fed anything, seems like, consistently fed biological organisms seems to be happier, if we're honest, you know? <laughs> I, think it's, uh, I think it's the co consistency, uh, just just period, you know, the, the fertigation. Fertigation in the system just always create a green, lush environment. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't know what, if it's the the, the the hydration specifically. I mean, it has to be, you know, but as long as you're not over hydrating it, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you're fine. You're allowing everything to rest and dry. Definitely in that soil environment too, right? You don't want to like, like you're saying, create that anaerobic environment where like, it's just more bad than it's good. But, but let's say you had a round that you did realize that, you know, after you took the pots out of the bottom of the pots were a little bit funky and they were like, oh, maybe there was a little bit too much standing water in the bottom of these pots. I mean, 
next round just add an inch or two of gravel or 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 uh, pumice or something you know lava rock or, or or hydrogen or anything like that to the bottom of your pot and eliminate that opportunity to create an anaerobic environment and continue on with the same method that you're that you're working with question for you though uh these pots aren't sitting well let me preface this by saying regardless i think that's going to help because you're lifting the media off the ground or wherever it is you're raising it off so that the more there can be there can be more drainage more aeration and it's overall better other than the fact that maybe you're reducing the size of the root mass which again it's not very much in this case so negligible but and your roots would still in encroach into those areas anyways for sure for sure especially if you you have like a pot or, or like a tray at the bottom that it's sitting in right and that's that's what i want to mention is i don't have anything like that so if water does expel out of the holes in the bottom of the pot it's not going to sit there where it could be reabsorbed into the pot it's going to drain away or you know because it's either on the floor or it's on a flood and drain table where there's kind of like those crevices right where the water can go and kind of drain away so that's one of the things that helps that but it's not yeah. as depending on your media like in a cocoa scenario where everything's like really nice and well drained you got perlite and stuff like that if you're using a lot of compost and stuff like that i mean you could have drainage holes in the bottom of your pot you could have that two inches of gravel you can still obtain a saturated anaerobic environment in the bottom of that root mass just because mm -hmm. you're over saturating your soil on a daily over over fertigating you know what i mean over fertigation with soil is completely different than over fertigation with a hydroponic media you know something with lots of aeration mm -hmm. yeah yeah, a, yeah like a, a cocoa, cocoa rock wool has lots of aeration, right, mm -hmm. right lots of aeration well, also you know, when was the last time you brought like new soil into your garden uh today <laughs> actually no literally not today but uh Ooh. yesterday or two days ago i transplanted all my veg pots and that was a mix of transplanting into new pots or sorry transplanting it into reused pots of soil but topping it off with some uh fresh soil also some worm castings so kind of filling in gaps and stuff like that. So technically, yes, I've added new soil to my Mostly garden. As, using soils. Well, I mean, ninety-five percent of it right now, probably. Yeah. That's. I think that's the biggest contribution contribution to the reduction in fungus gnats. Really? Yes, because once you once I think that most of the fungus gnats that most of us deal with is from the media that we use because Bring it's it in. outside or when it's freighted in the um the eggs are in the soil and they'll sprout out once we get it moist and put it in that beautiful condition for them to <laughs> reproduce and then if you don't treat them you let them get out of hand they're just going to keep doing that but if you do treat them and you reuse the soil and you don't bring a bunch of new soil in your population keeps going down lower and lower and lower and when you're treating with things like you're saying with the the nematodes and things like that those will persist in the soil because you right. didn't Onto there, that's still there, even though you haven't added them, they're still there. They're yeah, still and there. if there's a population to feed on, they'll continue, right? As long as I keep that that soil moist, which again I have been because it's been on a regular feeding schedule. So that's yeah, that's going to help my IPM too. Now that yeah. you say that, you didn't. Um, you I did want to mention red real quick. Uh, the uh, it would also contribute, like if you didn't have root mass in that part of the pot, right? And it's not absorbing the moisture to the plant. I've noticed that will leave kind of like clumpy wet areas, you know what I mean? Where it's just like not, it's not drying up because there's nothing to absorb the water. You know, there's no roots in that area. Sorry to cut you off. No, I was going to ask if you, in the, if, if you use nematodes in that last round that the flower might flower uh, uh, round might be in that soil. Nematodes, predator mites, and <laughs> oh, I was going to give the Latin word, but I can't. What are those? Oh gosh, I can't even think of those little guys. Rove beetles. Rove beetles. You could have yeah. a good population. Little shits. You could still have a good population of nematodes uh, reproducing. For sure. Yeah, especially if there's anything for them to eat. If you know, like I said, to keep the soil moist. Um, I I have, like I said, probably January, early January is probably the last time I added anything like that. But it's yeah, probably on like every two month schedule. I'd say on average on the last like year, 
something like that. It's been a lot of money on him, but you know, and overall speaking, you know, I think we're using soil. So. I think nematodes is probably the cheapest IPM you can get. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. Outside of outside of sprays, maybe. Maybe sprays are no, I think nematodes are still way cheaper than a spray. Yeah, a spray at what cost though? There's a long it's term hard to cost. Say, yeah, because <laughs> when you, buy, you buy nematodes, you get really two applications. Right. And when you buy a bottle to spray stuff, you get many applications. So it's hard to I wonder what the cost really does break down to. But, but the nematodes could also persist depending on your environment, like we've talked about, where the sprays true. don't, that's like a you know, 24 yeah. hour thing or whatever. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that there that's where you really make out there. It's it's weird to, looking at the economical values like short and long term between the different methods that we grow that we you know uh, protect our gardens or attack things that are already attacking it the way we address the media and nutrients like there's that all comes down to the philosophies that we have and mine has certainly changed over time but mine is always been a focus on growing the you know most flavorful flower and kind of capturing that essence um at, at the you know day of harvest and and extracts as best i can you know obviously flowers a little bit different but i'm still capturing the essence of that that flavor um See, i've been hunting more on the side of potex yeah. yeah so yeah, we talked it. about this recently and i i can respect that too but i still i've and i've dude i've been working in my garden thinking about you talking about that <laughs> and i still i'm just like flavors number one for me there's there's nothing that will be flavor because i've had a lot of shitty tasting weed that got me really high and it's like you can that's why people are still buying it from dispensaries it's not because of the well, flavor there's, you a know? Lot of people, there's a lot of people buying weed for flavor Absolutely. oh yeah they're buying weed for but sprays are becoming popular yeah but it, i think the average person has a very low tolerance and most anything is going to get them high if you ever run into a situation if they bought something that tasted like what they're that's buying a good point but yeah, didn't get them high they're not going to do that anymore. That's a good point. If you're smoking, every time you get back Friday, Saturday, that's how you do it. You're not getting as high as a grower usually. Growers hmm. smoking every day usually. It, it, it just, most growers I know. Just quick technical troubleshooting. Is anybody else here bakes audio going in and out? Yes. I was wondering. Yeah, the last like, five seconds. seconds but... Oh, okay. Okay. I was going to say let me, bake, uh, have let me a restart. cable or something. They might want. But Did you say new headphones? If you already know the issue, that's fine. no. He said it's my headphones. Okay. Yeah, here it sounds like what my audio sounds like when I have these wireless headphones not plugged in. <laughs> it's really obnoxious. Yeah, it's like in, going in and out. And stuff. Yeah, it's like I have Bluetooth it's interference like from it. here to three feet where my computer is or something. <laughs> well, I, I used to be able to walk around my house. And now, last two days, does that thing take batteries? That's at thirty percent. It's at thirty percent. How does it interface with the computer? Does it have a US or a, like a USB like a USB like that? stick that I didn't move oh. or anything? Oh, How's you know what? Like what? I did stick another USB next to it. Uh, I'm gonna unplug that. Magnetic interference. Yeah, I'm, because this is probably just running. Oh yeah, you're sounding you're sounding good so far. Um, That's crazy. This, this was literally sticking in there next to the. Is that just thing. a hard drive? Yeah, it's just a USB. I was putting movies on. Amazing. That's and, wild, uh, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I think that uh, I think they're mining Bitcoin off of that. <laughs> Maybe, like, yeah, they're doing something. It's kind of hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you better. You We're all already psyoped. Up up I don't care right now. It's all a psyop. <laughs> I was thinking it was our internet connection was why I was hearing that, but I guess maybe no. Was. I'm glad I didn't it, know it was that bad. So I, I, I'm a I'm a audio engineer, not by not by profession. Well, by profession, but not by not by uh, trade, right? I, one of those things. I don't have education in it, but anyways, when I hear something off, I'm like, eh. and so I assume the same thing, not true, until I listen to the conversation and everybody's vocals were clear. Uh, except big and then so i just did the process of elimination we had just moved our computer to a new spot too and i'm like well 
I don't know. Maybe it's just, <laughs> <they're> just <laughs> that's <laughs> smart, Red. That's smart. Just wait for everyone to talk and see which one that is perfect. Wait for everybody to talk. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, you know. So some I was here thinking it was me too. I was like, oh my commute. Like I turned my VPN off. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, I'm downloading too. The internet's always going in and out and glitching and bullshit. Well, we're we're hooked up to a to a landline, so usually it's it's pretty pretty crisp for us. And then I was like, well, you know, let's just see because I don't know, maybe he's got a a, a microphone, and, and it happens, dude. Where where you're fucking, you're left and your right, and one of them's fucking goes out. You know what I mean? And so you're yeah. just, you're just running off your left and your right spotty, and that spotty just happens to give you a whole bunch of fucking either interference, feedback, or some stupid glitching. In this case, it was glitching, and in this case, it was actually electromagnetic interference coming from a fucking USB. So, yep. That explains a lot, though. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I, like, I was like, oh, I guess my headphones just hit that stage where they're shitty now because that's what happens with products these days. <laughs> I, I honestly was going to say, well, was there an update two days ago? <laughs> or, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, because I remember walking upstairs yesterday and I got right to the top of my stairs and it goes disconnected because it says it in a little voice. I went, I can go all over my house and it doesn't disconnect. So I was like, something must be in the way. And I went downstairs and I looked and nothing was really in the way of the computer that or anything. But that <laughs> explains it. Is it just me or is Bluetooth? I mean, I only get like 30 feet out of Bluetooth. Or like, I should say like one wall. Like Oh, yeah. Bluetooth feet. sucks. People are like, oh, you can get 30, 40 feet. It's like, no, not if you have any walls. Uh, I see. Things. I see people like like there's drones that are Bluetooth based. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's like, risky. Yeah. That thing's flying away in a hot second. Hey, yeah. Even my uh, my DSLR camera is a Wi-Fi connection to the computer, not Bluetooth. Really? Yeah. yeah. When was it made? Uh, US three. So I don't know if when I got it was the year that it was made. I got it in maybe two thousand. <coughs> 19, 2018, okay, okay, 19, something like that, dude. I haven't bought a DSLR since like 2009, probably. So, I, I know that's like come a long way. The last thing they had was like GPS meta tagging in it at that time. <laughs> it has Bluetooth, but I think for other other sharing, I think, I think for other sharing capabilities, maybe for phone connection and doing like remote control, I think for Bluetooth, but then if you want to like run it link it to your computer or anything like that. You can link it with Wi-Fi for a nice solid connection. Or, I mean, link it hard cable for better connection. But yep. Wi-Fi will work nice. Cable's cheap. You can get 100, 200 feet for cheap. Run it through your whole house. Mm -hmm. As long as your family allows. That was my whole thing when I was a kid. I was like, yeah, mom, so uh, it's cool if I run this cable straight through the house, right? Like, I meant, like, all, I'm not drilling anything. I'm just going to run it on the ground. Yeah, not tucking it under carpets. Yeah, I'm there's not nothing. I just, just yeah. going to run it along the wall. Like. <laughs> and they, they'd, like, agree to it, not really thinking about it until you actually do it. And then they're like, nah, this isn't going to work. I'm like, what do you mean? Step over it. <laughs> Step over it. You, you're walking where you're going, right? Just put some gaffle tape on the ground, cover it up like a. And then we got those. What were those? Those little land. They're like you plug them in the outlets. They're like land bridges. Yeah. So you put one near your router, and it goes. It takes a whole outlet, and then it goes to the router, and then the other one. I don't know why your router couldn't do it, but you get these, and you could put the other one wherever you want, like. Even if you have a long house and then Ethernet from that one to your computer and you basically have land. But I don't I forget why we had to have those. They use the electrical cables to make that signal connect. It still used a signal. It still used a wireless signal from it, but it was it was a designated little out, a box on the outlet to a designated box on the outlet. So there was some other technology wirelessly that was better than our Wi-Fi at the day. And uh, yeah, but they were called LAN bridges yeah, or LAN. But now you don't need them because they got mesh networks. It was probably just mesh networks they were selling you or something. It's probably an early version of it or something. Yeah. It just needed to be powered, so <laughs> they just integrated yeah. it directly or something. I don't know. 
Hey Spartan, you'll be happy to hear the uh, squirt are now in flower. Uh, it's right. not gonna be ready until May, unfortunately. But um, yeah, pretty excited about that one. Raspberry parfait is coming along nice. <coughs> Several weeks, I don't know, four or five or something in the flower now. So that one should be ready by hash bash cup. Uh, probably definitely not for flower, but I'll just run a, some extracts of it. It's interesting. I have two very distinct different phenos of the raspberry parfait. Um, three of out of the five are very uh, not bushy, but they're like they're you know six eight tops something like I say eight tops something like that. Um, decent internodal spacing. You know they're not stacked too too on top of each other, but they're nice and frosty. Look easy to trim. Kind of opened up with uh, you know spreading it on its own uh, into the scrog dot and everything. Just overall pretty solid plants the type of plants i like to grow i guess and um, the other two are also very similar <clears throat> excuse me similar one of them is much weaker than the other which i think is interesting and i don't think it's a feeding wonder or overwatering type situation because again it's all on a irrigation system but i've noticed a lot of the lower leaves have dropped off and the plant is a lot lighter green than the one next to it even though they look similar otherwise size wise um, same size same size and everything. Um, it's Maybe just not the eater. You think? Say again. Maybe just a heavier feeder. You think? It must be, but it's it's a heavier feeder and not producing as much. You know what I mean? Oh, like the other okay. one is like dark green and like twice the thickness on the nugs and stuff. So I mean, again, location difference. Yeah. Hot shape. I like it could be anything. Um, but if I just had to walk in the room and look at them and tell you which one I like better, it'd definitely be one or the other, one over the other um but they're very like they don't spread out they're very just stacked on top of each other huge crowns like big thick nugs all the way down real close heavily stacked very broad leaves like just two totally different plants these two different phenos um and then within that one i've got a clear winner so I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with the other three phenos. If there's a clear winner over there, I might kind of take it to the end and kind of see a bag appeal on kind of all those notes. So like, you know, what it looks like, what the, the, the you know, pinch and taste smell, whatever it looks, uh, smells like. Um, there's not much are visually. So far, are they similar in terp profile or are they far apart there too? So far, all five of them are actually pretty similar in terp profile. Okay. So if, if that's the determining factor, well, that, you know, we're good there. You know, now it's just looking at everything else. Um, you know, I, I'm sure there's different percentage volume levels or whatever to those, but there you go. Some Spartan puke. Um, yeah, yeah, it is about dead time. <laughs> So I got, so got a handful of these waiting for you, Big. Sorry, I couldn't get them in your hands yet. That's all right. We got to try some at uh, Becca's party. Thanks. What'd you yeah, think? we were just over at Becca's yeah. party. We should talk about that. It was good. It was good. Well, I got a full I body think better. this morning. It was my first dab of the day. I had a fully cleaned rig and all that. Like It was just like perfect situation for a dab. And my forehead was actually beating sweat. My arms were sweaty. My chest was sweaty. Sweaty. My belly was sweaty. like my whole body was sweaty off of this one dab. It was like, damn, guys. <laughs> what did you dab? The club and puke. Oh, nice. That's what the yeah. That's what the spartan puke does to me. It makes if you take a big big dab of it, it just makes me hot, sweaty, and it punches you in the brain. <laughs> this is a nice start. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'm looking forward to those phenos. I need to get some uh, time. I'm sure I'll have more to share in the future. Tell us about this party. I'm sorry we missed it, guys. We got a couple very snotty little ones over here. Definitely don't want to spread the big guy. Oh, that is a-okay. We see each other <laughs> all the time. And you already gave me such a great gift, so it's okay. <laughs> got Spartan Peep, some lime skunk. We got to celebrate you either way. You know well, that. I got, to, I got to try the garlic dip. That was really good. Mm-hmm. Thank Loved you. Loved it. That was a new one. I got some rosin for baked, the triple burger and the Spartan Peak rosin. The triple burger is one of my favorites. It's so yeah. Good. So good. Yeah, I, still, I still go for that one. Yeah, that was our Before. first dab. It, it's like heady. Yeah. 
definitely a good feeling. Thank you. Yep. I can't wait to get them narrowed down and just like, or like ran as a singular, like triple burger one, I think we still have with number 49. Well, I'm excited to get uh, some warm weather so that we can get in that second flower room, get that up and go. Oh, yeah. Big runs of that stuff, the stuff we find in there and keep yeah. hunting. We're in. Yep. It's like I was telling Spartan, we got three females of Spartan puke to still narrow down. 14, 19, and number two. I don't even remember what number two was like, so that'll be like a... Two was the one that you picked for um, for a turp, it. I think it was. I don't think I picked it. Okay, well then you can just eliminate two, because I want four. That's what I'm saying. I don't know why, where we picked that, but I can't tell you what the bud looked like or anything. So... Uh, I guess I might have the jar upstairs still. So I can go check it out. But I am excited for this Soul Fire run because there's some weird looking shit in there. Everything's already purpley pink. I think that's a lot of the Bahama Mama coming through. And Spartan got me a, oh, one of them lights, one of them GML lights. What is the, the Borg? I think that's the Borg. You did. Oh, oh, no, it's not the Borg. That's, you got the oh, Vulcan. Uh, the, 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 the Vulcan. Borg. B-O-A-R-D is what he's saying, not B-O-R-G. Those are two different lights by a lot. It's a you Vulcan. You have two lights Borg. named Borg and Board? No, uh, you're talking about the Board light, not a bar light, which is the Vulcan. Oh, we yeah, have, yeah. We have some bar lights called the Borg. We have the Borg and the Borg Evo. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was confusing for a minute. It sounded like you said you had a Borg. No, I, but wait, say, we... I said Borg. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, because I thought that was what it was called, but then, yeah, I knew it was just like a made-up name, like a That's like Vulcan, make... like... You say Borg? Borg, or Borg and Vulcan are all word, words are... I can't talk. They're words from the Star Trek universe. Yeah, made up names. So yeah. well, first, I, mean, I knew it wasn't tarantula. I knew you have one called tarantula and torch, which are real words. Yeah, yeah. Those, those, so tarantula is actually what you have. Everything is tarantula because that's what the trademark is. So oh, it's like the Nike of the brand. Wait, and then the, the the actual name of the light would be like the name of the shoe. We'll say so. A Nike Air Jordan would be like a tarantula Vulcan. But wait, okay. how are the, how are the ones words and the others aren't? You, but they're they're all words. We all they're, all, they're all existing words, but like what, like like Vulcan shit. It, there's no the, there's, there's, no, there's no Vulcan you can touch. Those are just newer. It's words. it's a it's a it's a hey, fictional word. I bet you if you Google right now, is there a Vulcan I can touch? There, the answer to that question. <laughs> oh well, yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, but it's like, can you go touch the real Sauron? No. But, yep, so. This yeah, that's going to be cool exciting. Book. This is a pretty cool book, Spartan. Yeah, pretty we cool. I, I found that in a tractor supply, and I was like, that is right up their alley. There's some pretty cool recipes in here. I was just looking, there's a dandelion. Uh, oh, my God, don't get me started on the dandelion. I almost bought a whole book about dandelions there that was all kinds of dandelion recipes, making coffee. Dandelions? They got a lot of good books there. <laughs> That's yeah, there's some good stuff. Dandelion root coffee, is that? Yeah, you take the so when you harvest your dandelions, harvest the roots too, and it's usually pretty easy to do because they get nice. Mm -hmm. And right. then you dry them out, and then you powder them like mortar and pestle, and that is like a ground coffee. You put it in a coffee filter, and then you put your hot water through it, and it's a dandelion coffee replacement. So it doesn't have the caffeine, but it's got all the good minerals. How's it taste? I'm curious if like. Uh, I don't like coffee, so it's like, why would I make that just a tea at that point? Isn't it just like no, the tea? The tea is what you use if you if you use the the leaves and the flowers. But what makes what what isn't it just like we use like valerian root and we make a tea? Okay, 
Well, this is this one is specifically probably because it turns a brown as shit, so they That's call it. Is it like just because it makes it like brown? Is it a flavor thing? Like it tastes like coffee? Because of coffee, I feel like is coffee because it's a plant called coffee. And, and it has it's also flavor. a bean, right? I've it's seen that bean. too, but it's like it's like it's, they've call it a coffee recipe. You know what I mean? And I'm like, why? Why is everything else a tea, but the dandelion one specifically is a coffee? I'm, always I'm with you, Red. Let's get to the right. bottom of this. Like, I mean, nothing about the way the Spartan says it, specifically about this recipe, because I've seen the recipe as well. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm confused. I'm not confused about the coffee. I'm confused about the tea. what makes a tea a tea and what makes it. And it could be the leaf. A leaf the young, something. dried leaves of a plant prepared by various, by various processes and, and what would used to make a beverage served hot. Then what about if I use valerian root? Or am I now making a coffee? But then the, the beans of a coffee. All right, here, this is your answer for the dandelion coffee. It's often touted as a coffee alternative, but it doesn't exactly replicate the taste of coffee. Here's a breakdown. The similarities. The roasted dandelion roots. Oh, they're roasted. Okay, that's probably why, because the roots are roasted. Okay, okay, all right. Roasted all right. dandelion roots brew into a dark liquid that resembles coffee in appearance. Some brands even include chicory root which adds a bit of bitterness that strengthens the coffee-like character. But the differences are that dandelion coffee lacks the caffeine kick and the acidity of coffee. The flavor profile is earthier, with some describing it as slightly sweet and containing subtle floral notes. It's generous, generally smoother and less bitter than coffee. Overall, dandelion coffee offers a unique taste experience that some find enjoyable, even preferable to coffee, especially for those sensitive to caffeine or coffee's acidity. And let's keep going on this. And is I this know why substitute for this because I've noticed that thistle and dandelion and also daisy and they all and what else was I seeing? They all seem to be in the same family. Uh, it just those did. those are detox teas. So dandelion, burdock, sarsaparilla, milk this, thistle. This milk, milk thistle is in there. Okay. Yeah, those are all detoxifying teas. So the reason they call that a coffee with a dandelion dandelion is because you're roasting it. So just like you roast beans, you roast, roast the dandelion. That's why it makes it that that dark, mucky, so coffee-looking stuff. It's now becoming a coffee. So, so cool. yeah, just just I have the a dried answer, product right. is a tea. But if you roast it, then it becomes a coffee. I so think a tea, a tea is, is more of a raw. It was more of a yeah. raw just dried, yeah, dried raw, raw dried plants. And then well, you can make it out of fresh. You can make it out of fresh material too for a tea, but fresh. generally, yeah. It's just the plant material above the ground. Oh, well, it's below too, though, because there's a lot of root teas. I'm looking at like 30 different root teas. Yeah, I guess that's true. They make some cannabis root tea I've heard of. Echinacea, so yellow dot, valerian, marshmallow root. Is the plant work. from the coffee bean called a coffee plant, or is that some some different? And I'm not talking about the Latin genus. I'm talking. Sorry, about say that again. Is the plant the bean? Like it's a coffee yeah. bean. Yeah, coffee bean. So what's the plant? plant? What's the plant called? Is the plant called a coffee plant? I, I, I um, just called a coffee plant, but I'm just uh, assuming that it's called the coffee plant because I've, uh, I think it's a genus of flowering plants in the family. <laughs> Here we go with the Latin Rubia Rubiaceae. Rubiaceae. What's it? What's its common name? Coffee. 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 It's yeah, just coffee yeah. with one less e and an a in there. <laughs> There's species of shrubs or small trees native to tropical and southern Africa and tropical Asia. The seeds of some species called coffee beans are used to flavor various beverages and products. The fruits, like the seeds, contain a large amount of... I don't know. I'd have to click on it to learn more, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the coffee bean is the seed, but the fruit is different? Oh, let's, let's dig deep. Well, you have to look at the, the definition of fruit. It's got something to do with where the seed's located. In the fruit is the seed. That's what it is. They harvest the seeds and then roast and dry them and then roast them. And so that's how people the say fruit, yeah. like a big fruit, fruit because it's got that shell around the outside of its seed. So they say that canvas is a fruit then? Yeah. I believe this is a, is a fruit. Well, wait. No, it's uh, because it's... It, there actually makes a nut. The seed the, is a nut based no, on. Are you talking about coffee? I'm talking about cannabis. We we, oh, we okay. took a hard left. Google this one. What am I doing? Back to the cannabis conversation. <clears throat> I'm 
I'm not going to Google it. I'm going to ask Gemini. We're going to roast Don't do it. Roasted cannabis. Gemini's the worst, man. <laughs> well, Gemini's not the worst. Yeah, it is. What are you talking about? Are you guys having an AI argument? I have banks about it. I'm just, saying it's, way, I'm just saying it's better than Google, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it is Google. What are you talking about? It's better than Googling it, is using the Google search engine, is, is what I'm saying. Uh, disagree. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're making <laughs> tea right now. We're going to agree to disagree on that. Yeah, that's fair, because I don't really want to get into it right now, I'll be honest. <laughs> Huh. Cannabis does produce a fruit, but it's not what you might be thinking of. The cannabis fruit is an act. It's the, a keen. The same thing from our good old friend, uh, the, the American one, the American one with the keens. It's a small, dry, single seeded fruit that doesn't split open when ripe. A keens are more commonly associated with nuts and seeds ah, than, nuts. than fruit, fruit we typically eat. Cannabis is grown for its flowers, which contain cannabinoids, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. So cannabis does produce a fruit, and that's the seed that we. Uh, it's and that the fruit. seed is a nut. And Actually, I can share. It. Hold on, I'll share this. Let me try to do that. Present. And it's it's a nut because of its fats and oils and its health health benefits. Well, how do we define a nut? <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, I think it's. I think it has to do with the amount of uh, omega three, six, and fats and oils and et cetera. Have. Hard shell, dry fruit or seed with separable rind or shell and interior kernel. Yeah, no, if there's a diagram. Uh, Big, can you jump that up on the screen? Yep. And then... Uh, no, it's a, it's a, a diagram. Thing. See, here you go. It's that it's little... Keen, that, keen is associated with nuts. If you ever take a seed, you can rub the fucking stripes off. It's because it's got this little film over the over the actual seed. I guess that's what makes it a fruit. Or AKA a nut. A nut is a fruit. Or the cannabis fruit is so it's a fruit and a like and a coconut. It's it's both. Actually not. Yeah, yeah. Well, a, a nut is a fruit. Yes. It's a single seeded fruit that doesn't split open when ripe. Interesting stuff. So I'm growing fruits now. I thought I was growing flowers. Well, I am growing flowers, but I'm also growing fruits. <laughs> I grow fruit and flower. I try not to grow too many fruit, but yeah, I still get some fruit here and there. You know, that's always a good um, a, a good uh, defense against anyone that supports the Bible if they're anti-cannabis. Because See. I believe it's Genesis chapter 1 that states something like, you know, God put all fruit bearing plants on this planet for, you know, man's consumption or something like that. It's, so it's like, ah, weed. He gave us weed. <laughs> it's seed bearing. So we're good either seed way. Bearing? Okay. Yep. But we're good. Yeah. Okay. Thank God. So, so what's, what's sense Amelia? Do we just <laughs> lose the fruit if, if we don't make seed? Is it? Yeah. Sense Amelia is just, we're just florists again. No, then we're just florists. Well, yeah, that's just us manipulating. It's not like it wouldn't do it on its own. We all know that it's going to try like hell to reproduce on its own. Don't feel bad about manipulating it. We're not out there using. Oh, I don't feel bad. I'm just, you know, we're just betting the rules. Just, you know, we're just making, we're making it be celibate. That's all we're doing. So what about a seedless watermelon? Harvest. Manipulated? Harvested? That's just just a feminized watermelon, right? That's all that is. Have seed. (laughs) Doesn't a fruit need to have a seed? If to be a fruit, if it actually does. It usually gets those white false seeds. We're talking yeah, that's and sometimes black ones. I think they're just harvested early or something. Just be, so it's just the little. It has the little white seeds in it, so it still has seeds in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're just edible. Just the black mature ones. I've seen that with the cannabis too. Have you seen that? The little white immature seeds you get in cannabis. You can just Tell pop you, them. It's just it's the same thing. At that point, you've created a fruit. It's so fruity. I just love semantics, guys. I love that, man. I'm going to tell everybody, I've grown so much fruit, man. Thousands of fruits. Easy. <laughs> I like telling Except people, ever since we're, I'm a farmer. That's what I tell my siblings. My children. I've always said that. <laughs> I've always identified as a farmer. Well, just because I know the first thing that pops up in their face, you know, in their head is like a farm, like farm farmer. Joe. Clementines. Yeah. Like, Most Clementines. Most clementines don't have seeds. What about those little fuckers? They're, they're feminized, man. They're feminized. Or they're GMO. They think they're GMO. 
There's some tasty GMOs too. These are Not probably the radiated. GMO. The GMO. GMO. Something to do with something to do with a citrus citrus disease that would have torn out the entire Oh the Oh the hit Florida? Yeah, a few years. I remember there was a big, yeah, there was a big What's thing. Crazy is that that they generally supposed to grow green, and then it was some bacteria or something around Florida or this area that turns them and, and, orange in some way. But now there's a greening disease turning them back green. That that's an issue. Why? But there's like a thing where like like they made everybody get rid of all their citrus or something, and like the only citrus that can be planted is like the citrus from a certain corporation or something. Like it's super bizarre how it all went down. Like it's it's kind yeah, of that's good old boy down there, good old boy club down there in Florida for uh, sure. I'm not saying the sea oh, yeah. cool thing, but it certainly screams the c word. You know, when you get into the fucking politics of the whole thing. But and and I wonder about cannabis and that whole thing when you talk about HLV and then like seed corporation who. Who who discovered the HLV? Wasn't there like a tobacco, like like it, this? I heard this on. I started connecting some dots. I'm not going to get into it, so we don't have that, you know, on our show and our channel. But like I was hearing that, that the um, that the, you know, do your own digging on that one. But potentially the same company who kind of like found it was also like working in tobacco, taking dna or something from tobacco or something something like that and there was just you know coincidentally uh, soon well, we can say that the company that found it in that was sending those clones out that tested positive for it now the big hype now the big hype to market and push for triploid seeds right and triploid genetics well i'm fine with that i'm fine with triploid is too, but is it coming out of the same sort is it is it the bullets sell bullets and sell band-aids right sell bullets and band-aids yeah yeah, it is. Yeah, for Same sure. Corporation that's saying, "Oh, uh, did they introduce it and then introduce the remedy?" You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, they did that. what I'm kind of talking about with the citrus thing. You know what I mean? I'm just throwing questions out there. I, I have no idea what the truth is. You know what I mean? These are just questions. Well, I thought it was funny when the whole when they whole identified the hoplite and, and the same company that identified it contacted all its customers and said hey we have a treatment if you if you send us back our dirty <laughs> clones uh and, and we'll charge you for it and it's it's, it's tissue culture i was like wow how do you get away, how do you get away with that three and me <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i did that <laughs> it was a gift We'll see what corporation owns all of that. Did you find out anything cool? What corporation? It's the government. What are you talking about? <laughs> what government? It's the world entity. What are you talking about? <laughs> are they going to make clones of me? Uh, they can if they want they, to. They could if they want to now. They With can now. Saliva. Yeah. But they that can make clones of anybody that's in the system. That, that saliva. And, and really. like six, six like... That's what not is it? Like at six all. generations away from you. They like they have so much of the human genome at this point. It's practically yeah. fully mapped. Just a lot with they can do a lot with that information. Actually, they can do a lot. I'm fine with them fucking making clones of me. There needs to be way more of me, man. <laughs> they got to figure out how to upload that beautiful. No, but the point is they'll too. they'll <laughs> they'll kill you and then they'll replace you with a clone that's more obedient, doesn't use cash, yeah. and follows more. follows the things they love. Okay, does buy nothing but buy cards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, you might you might want to be worried on a clone. What if we're all clones right now living in a simulation? Sorry. Well, 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 show me, show me the inside of your eyelid. Because I've seen I don't a, have I've, eyelid. A gross thing. I've seen a movie and there's a little dot for how many times you've been you are like if you're the clone, what number of clone you are. Oh, was it made in Hollywood? You know, yep. Like, so it's obviously. Yeah, it's by so it's real. Yeah, so it's good. real. Arnold Schwarzenegger movie too, so that solidifies it. Oh, you um, didn't tell me that, and that's totally cool. Yeah, yeah. sorry. But yep. yeah, come on, man. That's got to be legit then. Yeah, it is. Uh, but yeah. I uh. I'm, I'm stoked. Uh. I'm, I'm, I'm a little scared, baked, that my veg is going to be out of control by the time I get back because it's like, it's like, 
If I wasn't going, if I wasn't going anywhere, I'd take clones and put one of them in flower right now. <laughs> but I was like, nah, I'm gonna wait a week and see what they do. But it's the new Oh, uh, it's a week. Yeah, a week will. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah, but it's, it's crazy. Have to super crop something, you know, but that's worst case. Yeah, that'll be fine. But it's funny when you see it because you'll see it's like you'll see how weird it is. Like there are four seeds from the same shit, right? And I have two nice big size. I mean, they're not huge yet. They're maybe a foot and a half tall, but they're going to be huge. And they got big ass leaves on them. And then the, the planter right next to it, two of the same fucking seeds, one that's maybe six inches tall, yeah. eight inches tall. Yeah, and the other variation. One, yeah, the Southern, Southern's like in the middle. I'm like, what the fuck? That's why I like the Functify. It actually has variation. On it. That's when you know there's some still some nice genetic poolage, you know, instead of just limited. But yeah, I'm excited to see that Newberry. That should be an interesting uh, high. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. Then after I grab something out of the Newberry, I think I'm going to get into my hazes. That'll be the next yeah, one. Yeah, I got some seeds from Teach. What'd you Fucking, get? Uh, double. They're like the fe the fem, so they're the you know the selfs from his. But there's like double cross, which is archive. I got some of those, and then. He gave me some of the crazy hazy. That's why I brought it up. The crazy hazy from he had some of those seeds self or something. It's the double cross. The double cross. Uh, I forget what it is. Double is it cross. is it one of the new Moombo ones? Yeah, he was doing all Moombo, so I'm sure it was. Yeah, it's Moombo times face off. OG, oh. Moombo semi three. Yeah, oh. he ran a bunch of shit because he wanted the Moombo. He likes the Moombo flavor. The Moombo, Moombo is the female that the seed was came from? No, I'm guessing... That, no, this would have been double cross seeding out on itself. Or pollinating itself. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. I might have to clarify that with him and see what they actually are. And then I remember he gave me some AJ's times Han Solo burger. Or Han Solo hash plant, I forget which one he ran. That he wow. personally made. Has he grown any of those yet? No. That's interesting. So, yeah. So like I was telling him, we were talking to him that we're just gonna have to do like a funky a funky run one day where it's just all of our odds and ends. Yeah. And then yeah. Let's see that one. Yep. Two minutes of hash time. Don't forget to switch the live chat. Damn, I just if you're new to the show. All chat. <laughs> it's all chat. All chat on your phone. Oh, Rusty Nails harvested a dirty taxi. I have yet to meet a dirty taxi I don't like. Like when I smell it at the yeah. fledge or somebody brings me butt of it. I love all the Fino's people. Yeah. Yeah. Like Every dirty taxi I've ever gotten to, I wanted to hold my breath. Ah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's, uh, it's like GMO time something. I have a very short, funny one sentence thing about Dirty Taxi. Last, well, maybe more than one sentence, but last time I went to see my dad, I was bitching at him for going to the dispensary, getting weed, and not calling me sooner. Uh, so I, I was there dropping off more weed to him. And he was telling me, well, you know, the best one that I got there. I said, yeah, what was that one? And so he, he handed me the thing, and it was Dirty Taxi. I was like, okay, I actually have heard of this one. I respect it. This one, if it's what, nice. it, says, if it's what it says it is, then that's a good choice, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> and he yeah actually, what else? He also, I'm going to buy some other seeds from him, too. Some seed junkie, which I know I don't really like them, but I like their these cuts. It's like GMO times something. <clears throat> so you knew I had to have that one. And then the other one is like wait a minute, jungle. Wait a minute. Let's back up just a little bit. What? And you say you really want to even put a smudge on your integrity by getting a seed junkie fucking pack. Just well, to go after GMO, which you have a billion packs of well, just GMO. Rename <laughs> it. Uh, I just I mean I don't have to say it's blankety blanks G whatever. I can just say uh, this is uh GMO uh, times whatever. Are you, are you gonna get what you gonna get some copycat genetics next? Is that where you're going? No, I don't think it's a parody <laughs> thing. 
<laughs> um, I'm not worried about it. I'll still pop something with GMO like that. I've had the other one we had. It's like jungle cake. Uh, you know, uh, Jack has it around here, but I don't know if I ever got any to you. But it was delicious. I don't recall. I don't. Yeah, recall. but he didn't keep a pheno because I was like, well, can I get a cut? And he's like, I, he doesn't keep cuts. Was, Jack? Yeah, it's so that's good. hilarious. Look, that fucking blew me away. <laughs> how you live a life like that, <clears throat> but yeah. Um, so I wasn't able to get that. But this will so this will be that. I got I got I got to remember what the crosses were. I can't believe I brought that up, with, and I don't know the crosses, but they're both GMO shit. So I think I'm snag those. I haven't bought some seeds in a while. Why not? The other one I was telling you about is on Strainly. This will probably ruin it. But there was 60 bucks for a 15-pack seeds of somebody made BX2s of Purple Urkel. And it looked pretty good. So I was thinking about snagging that this week. But yeah, hash time. So enjoy. Yes, buddy. I found seeds on the top three colas of one of my chem cookies before we went live and I am like really pissed. What do you think is the cause? Well and yeah, that they're on the top. Yeah, if you had wait, before you think about the cause, more importantly, where do you think the pollen came from? Do you think it's a self or do you think it's well, something that's, else? Yeah. So it because it could be cool to just let them see get get the seeds develop, right? If it's yeah, a cool oh, I'm definitely going to do that. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to pull it out at this point. There's no, I'm not going to do that. I'll let it go. And at this point, from what I could see, it's just in the top colas. So that's kind of making me think that it's a light thing, possibly um, that the lights were on too strong. Um, I know that, uh, I know Troy had him up a little bit there and we started getting a little uh, burn on one of the other plants. And so I had him turn him down a little bit, but that was, you know, about a week or so ago, but there's also a really bad light leak spot that's been kind of patched up and oh, it's just getting us by. And I don't think that's it because it's like in a whole different area of the tent and it's not even close to this. And this is affecting the top part of the plant. So I don't know. I don't know. I have to do some research. Obviously it was like literally right before we went live. I was like checking out the plants and I was like, what the fuck is that? I was like, is that a fucking seed? And then I just plucked the bitch off and it's hard as fuck. So I'm really the only the only I mean, I know you said it was right before the show. Is that the only three you found found? Did you look throughout the No, throughout that's the, the only thing. I mean, we literally were going live as I, okay. I found them. Yeah, I'd be so. very curious because at the at, if it's just a couple at the very top of the plant, that could be very different. Well, I didn't really notice the else. seed at first. I noticed the top three colas looked different than all of the other my, of my colas. And I was like, well, what's wrong with you guys? So as I got in a little closer, that's when I was like, what the fuck's that? With all the seed. So, yeah, definitely all three. But it's also like right next to a fan that's like blasting on it constantly. And that could be a stress that the fuck out, but that. I mean, you still need to find. I'm, I'm gonna do some looking around. The male, there has to be something spitting out pollen. Yeah, something. Are they dark seeds? No. Mm, no, I mean it's. I mean it's, it's darker, but it's hard. It's not like an immature seed. This is a hard. I mean, you like, for when you let it hit, you can hear it clunk a little bit. Yeah, I was not happy right now. Yeah, I would. I mean, yeah, it's never fun, but like, no, but I'm that's gonna... the moment you're like, oh, this run isn't perfect, guaranteed. But I mean, yeah. dude, would like that. that Especially if it's concentrated, would you say it was concentrated to one bud or to like several buds on the top? Uh, three, uh, the whole, all three top colas of this chem cookies are are affected. Huh. Yeah. How much of a loss would it be if you just it's only it? for and it's from what so what i've got in the picture here it's only like i snapped i snapped something before we and it's like only let me double check it again here and where where are we at in flower like three three day 30 30 40 from 40 or 32 depending on yeah depending yeah. on ish right around there but like it's probably about 
about two inches of the whole top cola is just kind of like wonky looking and then everything else below it looks perfectly fine three colas there are three yeah. i'll chop those three fuck it i'll just chop those three right now okay i mean not right now but, but i would i would take them now pretty soon because they're probably just selfs they're probably well, I don't know if you want to keep the seed though. <laughs> You'd have to keep them there. But. I'm kind of thinking about just keeping the seeds because I mean, seeing what happens, you never know. You know, like I told him, yeah. like something really cool. You, you know, if it's something. Well, to take that's what I would do. I take two of them and just leave the one. Okay. That or way, you find the source of the pollen and pluck the nana or whatever it is. You know, yeah, worry more about depends. What so if what... this is just from the last run or something? It's just pollen. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Like if you didn't clean a fan, there's a pollen that got thrown off a fan blade or something. Chopping plants yet? Yeah, well when you when you check but, for the hermy well, and you yeah. find one, if you find some pollen sacs, then you need to scour that plant. I'm kind and of start scared. looking at the top bottom of that plant. If it's riddled with them, you need to get rid of that plant. Yeah. If it's just on the bottom where the shade is or something, then you might and you only found that one or two, you might be able to just pluck them and just watch it. But if I had to guess, I kind of think it's the pink death bubba. That, that pink death bubba. Yeah, I found seeds on yeah. it before on the lowers of it before, um, like two runs back. Um, but I didn't have anything on the last run, and then like our last run, we didn't have any seeds. I didn't, well, at least I didn't. And all we did on the oh, I, did we on the Cowboy Yeti? Um, I don't remember. If they didn't have any on last run, then it's probably not something from any of the equipment. Yeah, so yeah. I think I'm kind of thinking it might be that pink death bubble, which is getting ready to get kicked anyway. So I'll let everything finish and see what happens. That'd be yeah. Awesome. But I'm definitely gonna be looking to see if there is something though. If it, you know, I want to find the source. So if I can. How does um having like a semi-seeded run affect hash production? Mm. I think it ramps up the trikes. Oh, no. When the plant starts producing, it just messes up your calculations and everything when it comes to weights because of the fucking seeds. Oh but yeah. I don't know how much it. I don't know I because it, we think it makes a little bit more surface area, maybe. I think it's gonna come out in the wash. I mean that. You know, that but you get way lower yield in, in flower. I think. Definitely gonna have a lower yield because you know that bulk is really seed and not you know bud. So. Well, my question is, what is inside of a bract or a calyx or that? What is inside of that? If not a seed. Is there cannabinoids inside of that, or is it just plant material? Because if it's just plant material, then it's six one twelve. You know, half dozen the other, whether it's a seed or plant material, if it's not cannabinoid or if it's not trichome heads in the sense of it's washing the ash, you're trying to only harvest trichome heads. Trichome heads are only on the surface area of the exterior of the plant anyway, so who cares about what's inside of that, right? Whether it's empty uh, or if it's a seed or anything, the seeds are going to float to the surface. And as long as you don't get the seeds inside of your ash or any of the seed, maybe shell. Right, and you a particulate seed shell might give you a burning. So I mean, if you're just making hash and extract pergolia, I'd say if you, in your situation where you're using a solvent, I don't know what's soluble within the seed or not, or if if that would even matter. If if the seed shell gives it such a, a nice hard, you know protection that it actually you know repels the solvent, uh, I don't know any of that. So um, I would say as far as just mechanically separating it, I don't think it would matter. I don't think it would. I, I, if, if anything, like like Bake saying, maybe maybe it increases this resin production because you now have a seed in there and now it has more of a purpose to, to be protected or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the seed create does something different to the plant. Generally, generally seeded crops aren't studied. You know what I mean? Which right, is, right. Yeah, uh, I've definitely seen different levels of production for different reasons in my garden, seed bearing being one of them, um, and not always a negative effect. So it's interesting to see. Uh, I think I've talked about that on the show. Beautiful. Seeded plants are amazing. They got big, robust mm. calyxes. In fact, there may even be more surface area because of the big, giant calyx. Now, at some point, that calyx will split, you know, and, and the seed will show itself, and then you may get inner and shit like that and so i don't know i don't know where the contamination would come from so the only thing i could say about the 
the seeds as a contaminant when it comes to hash production. And I don't think it's as much of a problem on the um, solventless or water-based side because, well, for the reasons you mentioned. And one of the things I don't think it is, uh, or, or one of the things I worry about particularly is seed oils right like that's i don't know if that's something you want to be smoking i know every time we smoke a seed like you get that snap crackle pop like there's it changes the taste like you just don't want to pick out the seeds and stems right like it's been a thing um i would assume you'd want that same thing in the in a hash production if you're just trying to avoid contaminants but i don't think seed oils are water soluble i also don't necessarily while they I, I don't know if they're hydrocarbon soluble but i know that they're fat soluble and i'm at operating at such temperatures that the fats and lipids remain behind so i would be under the assumption that those are probably going to remain behind in large part as well but you know but well, also remember that the seed, probably itself is the seed itself is protected, like where the fats and the lipids are all protected within a shell, a membrane that is hard and enclosed. And Yeah, but don't forget, like uh, uh, hydrocarbons are being soaked through the entire thing. And while they may not penetrate that seed to its fullest extent, they, you know, they may be washing across it for a various extended amount of time or something. I don't know. I just don't know the exact science on that, but whether or not they, that does that happens. Or not. The biggest issue really is like in the process of the. My brain is really high right now. It's hard to form words, but in the process of the plant that when it's seeded, right, it just changes a lot of, it changes a lot of the um horm. I don't know if it's all the hormones, but it puts a lot of the energy that it's creating into making the seed rather than growing and being a bigger plant and creating buds. So I think you're going to see, you know, a pretty big sacrifice to yield with a seeded plant over an unseeded plant. Even if you adjust for the weight of the seed kind of being throws it way off. But I think the, a lot of the energy, the same energy that's coming down, if you have the same exact light hitting the plant, if it's unseeded, that's very desirable because now it's going to get into that secondary metabolites. It's going to get into those uh, terpenes and uh, other flavonoids and esters and uh, volatile sulfur compounds, all this stuff that gets you all these other flavors and aromas where if it's pushing seed production, it might not get to those end steps. It might not get further down the line. It might, you know, give you everything you're used to, but maybe not that last kick. Okay. So, so, I have a question for you, but first of all, I would normally agree with you on that, but I have seen in my own garden whether that's not true, where a, a plant, a, you know, plant that I've been growing for years got uh, seeded and it was significant enough to be annoying and noticeable, you know what I mean? But not to like harvest the plant early or anything like that. But this plant was above and beyond stand out the best I've grown this strain in a long time just visually looking at it and it was just because it was seeded something changed with just that where it produced much bigger like more voluminous uh colas but, but let me ask you this have you ever had any other plant in your garden get seeded and do the same thing and do that no that's the only one and so that's why you have to remember there's exceptions to every rule for sure and that's why that's why i said i normally wouldn't believe you except for this one exception right but yeah the i so my question though <clears throat> is, is you can go a few different ways with this because i know even just the presence of a male plant could potentially have those could be an exception right could have some of those changes uh just being present in the room from my understanding and that you know i haven't tested it but okay so if we want to maybe we know a plant will trigger something like that which is a more voluminous production even though it's going through some sort of seed production, maybe it, it knows that it's needing produced seeds. And so it puts on the weight all around, right? Um, if, if we know that to be the case, maybe we could, no, no, or if we, if we assume that to be the case, 
um, as part of our hypothesis, maybe we could test it. Maybe one of the controls in this study would be to test it in a way that instead of just having a male present and dumping pollen all over it, maybe just dusting one, two, three, you know, a dozen different locations on this plant just to try to produce one, two, a dozen seeds to see if you could just trigger that response lower amount of right without putting so much production in the seeds because that's part of what i you know this this plant wasn't coated in seeds but it was enough that it's like gosh dang it like something something happened but it was also like I, from across the room noticed it looked different you know and i've been growing this plant yeah, for years, so. more sense but like man if we only could have experienced that plant without any seeds at all who knows what that would have been right that that's kind of what my argument is against it is like well we don't know what that plant would have done in those exact conditions with no pollen because it didn't, you know, for sure, for it, sure. And I can't, it's not like I had a plant next to it that didn't experience it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, I don't know. It's just like what I know of the plant, it's like, you know, it, it, it gets its, it makes its food. The food of the, of the plant is the light. It takes the light and that's what it makes its sugars and all that stuff out of. And, that's a finite resource right it's not like infinite so it's like money almost it can only spend so much then it's out of money well even the plant if it's going to spend money money on seed production right it doesn't make sense to me that it could spend some money on seed production but then also have the money to spend to get bigger and yield i would never see that okay but 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 think think about like how a pgr or something like that works something that's like this external thing that is tricking the plant into doing something right this is just like a hormonal trick right think about um i mean even even uh cutting like high stress training can throw this plant into a hermaphroditic state right so i think making the plant think it's quote unquote pregnant with seeds might also trick it into doing something as small as putting more of its energy into volume. Maybe it was less THC in it, right? Maybe it's something that we visually couldn't see. Um, or maybe it dropped the terpene content or something like that. Maybe it was it definitely is going to affect the cannabinoid content by changing its hormones to seed production because that's one thing about the plant that um i need to know the details on how the analysis went down what what did they do with the seeds and in in what scenario do you know what i mean like how are they taking the weight like like use typically a analysis is you know uh, milligrams or whatever units of thc per measured weight of cannabis usually it's like a one gram sample or something like that right are they removing the seeds when they're taking the one gram sample of the cannabis because you should be. And if they're keeping the seeds in the gram sample, then that is going to greatly reduce the amount of cannabinoids, but you're not smoking the seeds, you're removing the seeds away, you know? So I need to know more about these white papers. Yeah, it would be way more fair to do a dry sift, right? And, and get just exactly. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Let's do the hash. I don't want a flower comparison. I want a hash comparison. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want an extraction comparison. Yeah, because then you can't even say you're taking anything out with water, right? You remove that even. You're just doing right. a dry stuff, so you're just taking. Right. Yeah. That'd be the best way, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the just the weight of the cannabinoids. But just the- like to be to by by manipulating the plant by one keeping it the male away, um, the plant's going to keep growing the female parts to try to catch the pollen that's not there because it's not receiving pollen, but. Once it starts to get pollen, it starts to shut some of that down to do seed production. Because that's the number one priority for the plant is for to reproduce. I mean, to the fact where it will sacrifice limbs and other parts of its body to keep, you know, that seed production going. So I don't, I don't know. I, I just find it. Everything in my mind just doesn't click with, with uh, saying that if it's seeded, that it's going to somehow over still have enough to produce everything and i could i can understand yeah maybe just a tiny tiny bit maybe be enough to not affect it much but i still would argue if it was never pollinated that plant next to the plant that was pollinated maybe it's an imperceivable difference i don't know but i just keep thinking about humans and how humans typically put on weight in that um, gestation period obviously right and yeah but this uh, this isn't 
I know, but they're both biological beings. They're I don't putting want that to wake putting more food in their mouth. I mean, this is a plant that the light. I know, but there's 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 cycle. a lot of things behind the scenes, like hormone changes that are requiring that. that I mean, they even say that the uh, right, but male one attached to that female food. will put on weight. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's probably more of like a. Uh, it's because uh, everybody's eating more, yeah. Because right. the, yeah, because there's more food around. It's what I'm saying is the plant that's fixed, if, whether it wants it or not. The light is fixed. That amount of light that comes down, you don't typically change that. Okay, so, but so that's a constant. But doesn't go. don't the plants kind of almost shut off the amount of light they take up? Isn't there a limit to the DLI? Right? Is that kind of where we we kind of put that into play of targeting that? Because I've I've seen my plants. Right? We talked about the last yeah. week where they were wilt, not wilting, but it just at nighttime, you know, they're just done. They're done. Right? I don't. Is is the photosynthesis even happening at that point? You know, or maybe yeah, maybe not to the cycles. Well, yeah, there's the photosynthesis one and two, so it just switches to two, where it starts doing the photosynthesis too. That's why you can even flower under a 24 hour period, but you're wasting you know, right. power. <laughs> <laughs> or you can't flower. You can you can veg under it. Or you can flower with auto flower, I guess, under 24. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, I guess technically nowadays they've got the technology to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're talking about so many yeah, things. There, yeah, super, yeah, it's just, I love talking. I mean, about again, this is all hypothesis theory based, and I got like one yeah. example uh, under my 10 years of growing to. <laughs> that's, the thing, that's the thing that's so hard is like when you have something awesome, you're like, how do I replicate that? Uh, what did I do different? But it's easy to fall into that mind trap that um, that, that was, you know, whatever you that one thing that you changed was absolutely it that was it that was what did it but then you you try to replicate it you can never replicate it then you you have to tell yourself okay maybe that's not what it was maybe well, that's it was a, yeah that's that's part <laughs> yeah part of the scientific process but i don't think enough people do that right they don't really like they don't have like a that's i agree <laughs> a lot of people don't do that i try not to <laughs> i mean i mean so, so, uh, Subjectively, I, obviously, I don't want seeds in my in my buds, you know, just for for many, many, many reasons. And the, but but over the years, there's many, many, many times where I've had seeded crops. While that crop was growing, unless I actually saw a seed sticking out of a bract or something in the bud or just some area, I I, I would have no idea visually that those plants were seeded, even while trimming or smoking through the plant. Until I came across some seeded material, I would have no idea. That, that plant had been seeded outdoor plants during a pollination project where i did seed crops and plants that we grew for many 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 years lemon dozy dough um you know, citric and uh, strawberries and cream all of those plants grew just as big and robust as they normally do uh it, better than years that i hadn't seeded them uh grape apes specifically the years that i seeded it grew the best you know it was, big great plants and i never noticed any secondary metabolite differences like if anything like the outdoor just is always like the cure on outdoor lasts for a year you know the nose on some of these strains would just is impenetrable for six months plus easy indoor you don't really get that i mean with or without seed i don't have a notice of a quality difference until i break into that and then there's seeds dinging and danging and there's you know seed husks entering the the smoke and then then the final product gets affected because there's not seed husks in the smoke you know what i mean that's that's when i notice it but i don't really notice it while it's growing and um in, in experience and, and i i do i mean I, I mind when there's seeds in the smoke you know i don't want that to be a thing unless i'm actually breeding or making seeds you know so obviously it's not a a wanted thing but I mean, if there's seeds in the bud, I still don't. I, I still don't see an issue unless there's pollen. Unless there's making pollen, like I still don't see an issue to like pull the plant early. I don't think that it's going to affect the rest of the plant or neighboring plants for that matter, especially unless it, there's pollen on it. You know. I, I now that you said that, I didn't really even realize it was seeded. Like that was the reason until after the fact. And I, you know, I found the seeds and I'm like, I guess maybe that's what it was. And that's kind of what I attributed it to because I don't know what else I did. But yeah, one small, you know, uh a little bit of experience that I just it stood out to me. And I've I've seen a lot of different things like that over the years, the way plants grow. But 
if I could replicate that in mass on all my streams, I would. I just, yeah, it has never happened before. And I don't think it's, yeah, I don't think just dusting a, a bottom corner of my lime skunk is going to make it all of a sudden give me twice the amount of weight or something. But if I could replicate that, I would. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Then you'd be surprised. You wouldn't need very much to, to get seed. I mean, you for don't real. Oh, you say dust, that already makes me think, oh, that's hundreds. <laughs> Maybe more. That's the thing about pollen. It gets everywhere. <laughs> I feel like just having pollen on my breath. <laughs> I'm like walking <laughs> from being outside. It does. It's so fine. It's 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 like six to my beard. His beards, yeah, man. It's crazy. <laughs> As well, just dust the whole room. <laughs> but there's also definitely a difference between like a seeded bud from a male, and you know some some pollen that comes at the bottom of your plant, and you just get a couple seeds in there. That I think there's you know. The couple of seeds isn't going to do much unless you're grinding it up and then it's all mixed in. Yeah, yeah, and it stands out. I mean, you, I mean, you have to not be paying attention for real to to, to let seeds get through. You know, yeah. you pick it up you'll feel it too. They're kind of sharp. Oh, like you pick up a bud and just ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> just, there is no bud at all. There's no yeah. at all. Yeah, that's the thing too. Is like if you have a, like a a fully seeded bud you're not does not bud to smoke but you, you just do that you just let it get dry and do this and get the seeds and your hash <laughs> yeah uh, by the time you get enough weed to like roll a joint you've gone through like a quarter ounce of weed you know it's that's that's unfavorable yeah, fully what's cool especially what's like a, a like a, a high seed to gram ratio you know what I mean? we're talking like is it like two seeds seven seeds 20 seeds and like one gram per you know gram I mean? yeah per I gram because okay let me let me one gram i feel like what it is i know but like, one seed definitely. per pollen per pure piece of little pollen that you can't see with your naked eye basically per one of those is a seed Potentially, if it if it hits a well, sure, potentially, but yeah, it's yeah. Okay, I, let me let me let me let okay, me put so it this way. A nug this size could hold a hundred seeds plus e easily. Are you saying where's where, what's a bad ratio of seed? I I say if you got two seeds in a in a in a gram sample, and eh, that that's that's not gonna destroy your sample as long as. You oh, I thought you're asking how much you could get in a button a nug. No. And that's that's a good point too, though. Spartan. I, let me let me explain. Yeah. Okay, so let me just start with an example. The when I started growing, it was because I bought a quarter ounce, and it had eighteen seeds in it, and I I just pulled every single one out. I was just like, for fuck's sake, you know? And I'm like, I guess I'll just start growing now. I like just you know popped them all. They all germinated, and off I went. That was over ten years ago. Um, that to me was a lot of seeds, but I've also bought, you know, an eighth or whatever. We got, you know, one, two, three seeds in it. And it's like, okay, just deal with it. Cause it's like, like Spartan's saying when you're growing again, this is 10 years ago or plus. So maybe I'm just thinking about that. I guess like, like Spake said, you get one seed nowadays and, in, in a, in an ounce. And it's like, that's a problem. You know what I mean? If, if I don't think real. an ounce, but like if, yeah, if it's, it's somebody <laughs> break up a gram, and every time they broke up a gram, which means every time they go to do a joint, most, you know, that's pretty, that's a, yeah, that's bad. That's a lot. Dude, I ended up filling up a one per ounce. I feel like is, is fair. I got a pound. I got a pound before and I was able to fill a Ziploc bag with seeds. Yeah. See, that's nuts. It was yeah. fucking stupid. That is terrible. That's a seeded up garbage fucking. Garbage. And like, and like, what's that? Like, what is the actual. So the, it, you had a pound of flour. A pound of flour, and there was at least an ounce. An ounce of that was seeds. Okay, so it's like a, you know one sixteenth. Yeah, yeah, I'd say call it. weight, weight wise, and I'd right. say out of a quarter. I mean, seventeen seeds. You know, back in the day, back in the day, that was that was not bad at all. Honestly, yeah. that's, this was supposedly from a medical, like a caregiver. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's you know, if you're not expecting any seeds and you get 17 seeds, yeah, like if there's that many, seeds. I'd that's probably five seeds be like, a gram. you might find oh, some seeds, and it's a couple <laughs> seeds a gram. That's a yeah, couple, yeah, seeds. Exactly. Not not exactly. Too. if they hand you the bag and they don't say anything to you, and then you get 17 seeds, that's the problem. 
Yeah. Well, and yeah, and they like they took care of it. You know what I mean? They took care of me, I should say, because I told them I showed pictures of everything. But the best part was coming back to him like 10 months later and giving him a literal undried fresh cola of that white lotus or whatever that i grew of hibs you know what i mean it was his his, yeah. and his garden and now i'm growing it and I, i'm like i guess you gotta dry it yourself but i just wanted you to have this you know what I mean? he said yeah keep keep giving us seeds dummy and then <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. If it's a good enough stream, and it was, teach a man how to fish. Why not? Exactly. We found that like people will say to us, like, "I found one seed, and I'm so excited to pop it. Like, I love what you grow. Like, I'm so excited for that one seed." That's... In the back of our mind, we're like terrified that somebody's <laughs> gonna find a seed. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not terrified. Right. We're yeah. Like. We're... We don't want somebody getting upset because it just kind of happens. Right, and explain why. It's not because you want someone like stealing your genetics or something like that. It's because you just don't want an unsatisfied customer, right? Yeah, like, yeah, and and mostly that. But then the, there is also the portion of you know, there's always the opportunity for somebody to overreact. And 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 it's one thing to have an unsatisfactory customer. You can you can take care of an unsatisfactory customer. You can't take care of somebody who's overreacting. You know what I mean? It online yeah, yeah. Destroying to... everything. All of a sudden, you're the fucking glory child of having the fucking seed crop. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, fuck out of here. That's what you just post in our chat, and we all come in and say, dude, that's like a hundred fifty dollars seed, bro. What you, like, you better freaking sell that thing, man. Let's gonna pay for that quarter ounce you bought, dumb dumb. You know, a, a, message, a message will come through, and it'll be like. Do I have permission to pop this, you know, holy seed that I found in this bud? And I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah. Say a prayer thanks over for not like, like thanks for not like like shaming me across all platforms of the internet. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I found a seed. Because it's very natural to find a seed, even in as as you know, clean or as however it happens, you know what I mean? Shit happens. It, I, I run genetics that I've had for Almost, I've had the flow, the granddaddy, and the Death Star since like 2015. All of those, and like every night, and the flow's always been this way. We're like, you know, if she gets huge and bushy and dense, and in the under lower canopy, there's just not enough light gets down there, and and you get some herms down there every now and then if you don't clean it yep. up enough. You know what I mean? And or early time, enough, you just can't get to it enough. You know what I mean? You get a little bit of pollen in there when we have the like. Big eight foot gmo plants we had that happen at the bottom and yep or sometimes the regrowth would get you like that too it's like you cleaned it up but yeah. you did like nine you got like 98 percent of it but you left like the little two percent that you didn't see yeah. this little tiny bit of growth and you say okay i'm done with that you come back you look at it again there's a little fucking flower all of a sudden form there with a little herb underneath it You're like, I'm, damn i'm sorry to tangent here but red i am so convinced that in 2015 you and i got the same cuts of both granddaddy perp and flow because that is when i got those cuts and those but i got them from colorado so i'm wondering if you got the same cuts passed to you and they were from colorado just got like you know maybe just the, ten or two in between the guy that brought it to michigan paid not for the this is the story for the granddaddy not for the flow he paid two grand for the granddaddy purple i'm not sure where he got it from but it's not ken's granddaddy purple i was growing ken's granddaddy purple i got it from the dispensary here and and i was like hey i'm growing ken's too is it gonna you think it's gonna turn out like yours you know and he's like he laughed he was like that's not ken's granddaddy purple he like you know, was like offended that I mentioned Ken's granddaddy purple and compared it to his, I think, I think it's the NorCal granddaddy purple and the flow. I don't know, but I think the flow is Colorado flow. I think it's called Colorado flow. It's, it's, I believe a Dutch passion version of the flow that went around and that I believe is a flow. It's possible that both of those came from Colorado um i was gonna say that i just acquired the cuts from a, a grow in colorado you know what i'm saying like it wasn't necessarily like something that was 
hopped in Colorado or bred in Colorado or anything like that. It was just at a commercial facility right. in Colorado at the time. This they got this though. I didn't get these. I got these in 2015 from them, but they had this for like five years prior. They had this for a long time prior to that. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but it was like those things of like, no, you cannot have these cuts because <laughs> you know it's 2009, 2010, and nobody shares cuts. You know what I mean? Not without paying two thousand dollars, basically. Um, but yeah, those those were clone onlys that they, that I got through my best man, who was working directly with those guys, holding stock for them, and doing a lot of work for those guys. Uh, and then he ended up hooking me up with those clones. But. I'm not sure. The the only other place that I saw the Granddaddy Purple was the same place that had the Grape Ape and like a lot of TGA work, and that was at 1818 Arborside over there. On uh, I, I believe some of your work was was at that spot for a while. That spot on Pat 1818 Packard, not Arborside. Mm -hmm. 1818 mm -hmm. Packard. Um, what was that place called? It was called Arborside. It was Arborside. Yep. Arborside. Okay. R.I.P. Rory. Yeah, but that's where those those cuts were. So I'm not sure if if that great babe came from you or not, but I think that's right. No, we didn't release any of the cuts. So I mean, again, they were released to they us. Had, so who? It's not like we like helped. They, they had them in Depot Town also. Depot Town, um, but Depot Town was related to Arbor Arbor Wellness is the other one that I'm thinking of. That's another one. Yeah, we, we were also there. Uh, Arbor Wellness had clones, and they were a sister store. They may have been the original store or a sister store yeah, to Depot Town. Yeah, Depot Town was one of the other, and they both had clones, Depot Town and Arborside. They had the same people supplying them clones. I think it was the owners, uh, the the head caregivers, owners of, of those shops were the suppliers of those clones. But the other one, the 1818 Arborside, they had, I don't know who their rep was, but they had TGA behind their counter um all the, all the he used to go around himself and sell sell his uh yeah, very well seed displays that's how the lady spartan uh, and i met rory was very tied in with the that community like the yeah. OG, a lot of ogs in the community he's you know world traveler and um just tied in with a lot of those people so I, i'm sure he had direct access to that type of stuff you know what i mean do you remember the flow and granddaddy that you had they compare with the uh, with ones I have because the ones that are ours really haven't changed at all like it really hasn't drifted the, the flavors stayed the same for the year um I would love to see them lo like living that'd probably be the only way I could actually tell you okay. and I yeah. think I'm sure I've seen like pictures and stuff um but yeah I mean from what I've seen in the jars it definitely reminds me a lot of them you mm -hmm. know and the way you've described them in particular is exactly how I describe them too. You know, the short, super dark purple, yeah. like the flow, yeah. how it's just like a perfect in, in the middle kind of buzz. It kind of brings you down or takes you up wherever, you know, from wherever you are. It's like, it's really unique in that way. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, it's very floral. It's got a floral like... Um, Stank. Yeah, but with this like spicy, mm. spicy herbal herbal uh -ness to it you kind of kind of like that um og og kush spectrum you know it's like got that little like incensey spice to it it's really really nice but then it also has like a nice nice little like lemon peel on the back end so, which might be the tie where it's nice and uplifting in there not not too hazy of a citrus but like just just like a almost like that's a kind of like describing it was maybe hazy with the spice and the and the incense that's kind of hazy yeah i guess so i guess so maybe that's coming off the tie but i really i mean it i i wish i wish the dude that, that got him that got him here or that that knew the dude that got him here i wish i wish i wish our homie was still around to ask him a little bit more about it because now that 
I have more connections within the community and the industry. And now that I've learned a lot more about cannabis and just genetics and things like that, I have a hell of a lot more questions for the dude. And he hasn't been around since 2015, 2016. So that's, that's the, the, the main disconnect, you know, it wasn't shortly after I had acquired these genetics. And I honestly, they were a gift for my best man. And it was kind of like on the hush hush, not to really, I couldn't really tell him that I had the genetics, really ask him about it. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, keep these on the hush because I needed them for my patient of mine who really needed it. Um, and the granddaddy purple worked for him. The patient needed purple kush, um, heavy, heavy indica, pure indica, whatever, you know, uh, heavy purple that could, um, alleviate his tremors that he was having in his eyes. He had optic tremors and both of his eyes, he couldn't drive. And if he smoked, you know, a haze or anything like that, it would make it worse. It would uh, make the problem twice as bad. And so he had to find very specific, very specific uh, genetics and the granddaddy worked, man. It was beautiful. And I was, I was middleman in it for him for a while. You know, picking it up from those guys for a couple of years, a good couple of years, and um, they had a lot of great. You know, they 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 were, they were they were the guys that were using jacks. And they were kind of the reason I started using jacks because I was like, the best weed in town, man. I'd gone to all the dispensaries in town, right? frequented dispensaries, and I was uh, getting that stuff for myself and grow and just learning how to grow. Really, I've grown a little bit, and I I was I was just middleman in product for a long time and then all of a sudden i started finding that they had fruity weed they had weed that smelled like skunk they had some, some good shit they had east coast sour diesel schnozberry fucking las vegas purple kush like some really really good genetics man and um yeah i was fortunate enough to get my hands with the granddaddy and the flow over the years and both those just have been keepers forever i've held on to those things for so long and the dust the dust star i picked up from a disc boat i've held on that fucker forever too it's given me more issues i've had more issues with the dust star than any of those others actually we almost lost the granddaddy should talk to our friends over at uh what's her uh i'm drawing a blank here is it rachel at uh, deep, deep roots, roots? Yeah. yeah i remembered something yeah so deep roots that would be <laughs> my brain was like blank for real Pulled that out of nowhere. I think she was in chat. Yeah, she, yeah. You should talk to her because something like that, man, it might be worth. I don't know how much it would uh, cost to see if she could do even not go all the way to the Mary tissue. Uh, maybe she could do just some classic uh, tissue culture that's maybe a little bit more affordable that might give it some vigor back. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll tell you what's been working is fucking metal halides and good love and time. It looks good right now. Have you put any of them outside recently? Like one of the first yeah, seasons? Yeah, I've tried every year for the last fucking decade and just does not like going outside. Hates being outside. So I'm, I'm going to try doing it a little differently this year. Last year we were kept in the greenhouse and it just wasn't looking good. So we kept in the greenhouse. But um, if I can get, now that it's actually looking better, I might be happy with a clone to go outside. Maybe I can actually have a good one outside this year. Yeah, we got a good mom at the moment. She's looking good. Nice. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe she just likes that mental highlight spectrum. Like there's, there they are, Deep Roots Tissue Culture in chat. Lex yeah. out. That's my sex test location. <laughs> my sex test location. You guys need to tape that and clip that for a commercial for you guys. <laughs> Deep roots tissue culture. That's hundred percent legal. <laughs> That's a test. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Mm. Oh, That's gold. That's gold right there. Yep. Might have to, I don't know, our next run might be regular, so we'll see. We might need those services. There you go. She says, an epigenetic recess, what you're looking for, Red. Yep. She's got an option. She's got an option for you, bro. And she's in your area. 
It's nice you to see. To go far. It's nice to see plants come back with vigor, man. It's nice to see them. Especially old ones that you've been holding for a long time. That's really cool to, uh, to take, be able to take, it. make the right clones. Yeah, it's like, like, like the, the big thing was we had a nice big mom. It was looking good, and I took the clones, like the three best looking tops. It, the bullshit on the sides, I didn't bother with them, and 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 if and if they did root, it wasn't something that I was going to turn into a mother plant. You know what I mean? And I did that. For, yeah. A year, you know what I mean? Two years. I did that for like two, two and a half years. This plant's been gotten like a good run off of it a couple times, a couple times in the last couple of years. And this run looks big, nice big bushy plant. It's, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. And the stuff come back. It's like, huh. Like a granddaddy almost lost. It like dampened off on us, has some fusarium. We had our a little bit too much runoff in our our overflow tray, and it just sat for too long. You know, went out there a couple. Yeah. Times. We'd vacuum it out. We we couldn't get out there. It was during the time when uh, DOG was was passing. You know, and yeah. all of that stuff. And like, there's just so much going on in life. And uh, the the granddaddy purple, like, yeah, dude, we almost lost it. It it started to die, and it was like super wilted. And so I took some clones of that wilted material and I didn't like root them right away or try to root them right away. I just put them in a cup of water and within a few hours they were all perked up and they looked good. And so I took those tops and was able to get new mothers and we actually have a, a round and, and flower right now. Um, but yeah, we almost, we almost lost our granddaddy purple. That yeah. one. And Rainbow Driver actually happened to Rainbow Driver as well. We started to lose one of our Rainbow Driver mothers. Oh, yeah. That's a good so, one. yeah, like like I, I never really had an issue with like some standing water and cocoa, you know, but with mothers and they've been sitting in the same pot and these mothers have been in the same pot for a year. And I mean that cocoa starts to lose its ability to retain oxygen after a, a bit of time, especially that bit of time. Um yeah, I'd say, you know, fresh plants, they could you know Just risers put them on risers listen yeah maybe that'd, maybe that'd be the best way to fix that they needed risers bad they were just sitting on the tray so we're changing things up a bit you know we made more space for moms to get bigger and kind of rearrange some stuff and we're doing moms more frequently just kind of working that into the rotation i've seen this one thing i can't remember what the hell it was called but i thought it was at least interesting and it was a way to it was it had the saucers for your pots to sit in and i thought it would be perfect for the mom for moms specifically but they were all the saucers were all connected by drainage so like all the saucers drain oh yeah them. and i thought that would be pretty uh, sweet i think it's called drain away tray yeah that's what i was thinking drain away i was gonna say you could also just uh drill a hole and put like the you yep, know fitting drain away trays and you can kind of make it flood and drain that way yeah <laughs> get some bulkheads I've thought of so many different options of doing all of that, but when you're talking 72 plants and doubling that with plant counts, and that's just so many bulkheads and so much. Yeah, I was thinking of just for the moms. That's it. Oh just, yeah, yeah, for the moms. And yeah. yeah, yeah. Risers work good. Unfortunately, they take up space. Um, unless and they're, and they're a pain in the ass to wash. Other plants fairly expensive for what they are. Yeah, and it's all additional. It's all additional stuff. You know what I mean? It's all extra stuff. And then there's extra costs all associated with every one of those things. And you can't do it for just a couple plants. You got to do it for all your, all your moms. And, you know. What's everybody about to go munch on? I've got That's a good question. Donut. I've got a donut that I got from the Meyer Bakery. Uh, though. Oh, my name. We've got a big pot of veggie tea brewing up. I mean, <laughs> he's got some sweet tarts. Sweet, sweet tart. tart. What else did it say? For sweet bed. Something. Can't read the bottom part. Does it say Jolly Rancher too? Jelly oh. beans. Sweet jelly, bean? jelly beans. Oh, yeah. Sweet tart jelly bean. That makes way more sense. Oh, nice. For About that time of year. Dude, uh, speaking of munchies, though, I uh, <laughs> yeah, ran a quick trip to Chicago, found a sweet hipster 
restaurant, which are my favorite type of restaurants because they take all sorts of flavors I wouldn't think I'd like, combine them, and usually they're pretty dang good. Uh, and I had walleye fish tacos with, I can't describe most of the things on it because I don't know what they were, but it was really good. And then uh, the reason I bring this up is because you mentioned donuts. They like just those like donuts, but they're like the ones where they just take the clump of dough and drop it in a fryer. You know what I mean? Just coat it in cinnamon sugar and give you some sort of sweet. Oh, oh my God. They were so good. We had breadsticks that were deep fried the other night at, at, a, at an Italian restaurant. And I was like, these need cinnamon and sugar on them. It was like eating a raw donut. It was fucking weird and gross. <laughs> Can I put my own butter on this too? This is weird. Yeah. It was like a raw donut. Yeah, you didn't have one of the deep That's weird. breadsticks. I did. It was like a raw donut. <laughs> I like donuts. It needed the same. I sure. had a donut today. It was like a blueberry little circle donut. It was the first time oh, I had. I love blueberry donuts. Fuck I love blueberries. Or probably September. My yeah. donuts are those ones with like crunchy nuts all over it. That's the donut I have. And it's like this big. It's not no small baby one. It's like a monster. I like want to break my gluten. I like glazed like donuts. donuts. Uh, well, that's what those are. See, there's yeah, a donut yeah. that they glaze. Oh, yeah, the glows down are a little bit. They're squishy or really crunchy outside. Those are all oh, like the crispy creams. Yeah. All that sugar. Oh, like, uh, man. Like donut. What are the donut holes? Mm. Oh, yeah, donut holes. Dunkin' Donuts. Emily's got me really enjoying Dunkin' Donuts going in there. She likes the coffee, but I love the donuts. They got a Dunkin', Dunkin donut. Donuts is one of the few with a nutty donut. Mm. <laughs> so nutty Dunkin donut. donut? Get you a box of donut holes before you get on that plane tomorrow. Yeah, they got a good donut. They've got... They have donut holes that are even um, a jelly there's filled. Not, there's not even a good donut place in that airport. A jelly filled donut hole. I was impressed. <laughs> well, that's. But mean. when you get to <laughs> the connecting flight, there might be really good places there. Pennsylvania? Yeah, I imagine they got Annie Ann's. <laughs> and I imagine they got probably a donut place. Most, I'm very surprised Detroit's big ass doesn't have good food but they have a lot of restaurants and shit yeah like nobody wants to sit down at the airport and eat food i did all the uh we got there cinnamon toast that cookie. sounds really good that sounds yeah cinnamon toast cookie. 50 milligrams though we uh we dose these up pretty good they're not very big <laughs> 50 that's a nice one no 150 150 oh 150 wow yeah cool. no we uh masupat and i split one of these the other night and we had a good night's sleep, and uh, we're splitting a second one tonight. So, uh, cheers! <laughs> <laughs> cheers! Hi. You could just eat one of those, and you'd sleep pretty good, probably. Mm. I think I got sure I saw you on the plane with one. <laughs> yeah, five would eight two. I, I remember always going to the Taco Bell at the airport. And that was the only time I ever got Taco Bell was at the airport. That's a really good time to go. To the Damn airport. Don't, yeah, don't do Taco Bell. Oh, that's, 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 that's where I met my seven layer. <laughs> and then, and then when I was oh. when I was a teenager, oh dude, I, I, just, <laughs> I would go get twenty dollars worth of at the time. You know, ten dollars worth of fucking Taco Bell. It'd be a good excuse. But you guys are you guys talking about food. It's like that's the last thing. I think I'm not going to find some <laughs> maybe a snack like some you know chocolate covered peanuts or something. What's uh what terminal or what airline are you flying if you want to share? Because the uh, I think it's American, okay. wasn't that what it was? Baked. I, yeah. I don't I don't know what terminal like has what, it's, but it's, I know in the Delta terminal there was a uh this kind of played out now because they're everywhere, but Chick Fil A was a nice little treat. Yeah, like, but it's always place. slam perched. It's what? Uh, that's the McNamara. There's terminal. always like a line that's literally a mile long for the the. I mean, the, it goes quick. I, I'm yeah, it's worth. Just like the McDonald's, in. but yeah, he's in that one. He's in the same one as Delta. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, there's a McDonald's, and like every time I go, there's just there's literally a line out the out yeah. the thing. It used like, to oh. only be Northwest Airlines. The entire McNamara mm -hmm. terminal used to only be Northwest Airlines. Yep, flown out of there quite a bit with Northwest Airlines back in the day. Me too. My my mom, old, old Mama Redward for Northwest Airlines for many years. Nice. And and then she retired with Delta after they. Why did you have to say old Mama Red? Why did you just say Mama Red? 
Did I say old mama red? I didn't you did. Red. I said, old, he said old. There was an okay. apostrophe in there. He didn't okay. finish it with the well, D. Oh, well. Sorry. <laughs> oh, well. Some respect on her name. Old, Jeez. Old. <laughs> not old. She's sure not old. Legendary mama red. She's That's not. That would be not. What is, so I mean, what did she do over the years for the airlines? Let's go she, she originally was working in, in tickets and reservations in Livonia. So she wasn't working at the airport until I think the early, sometime late mid 90s, something like that. Early 90s, she was working in Livonia. Mid to late 90s, it was at the airport. And then 9 11 happened. Tons of layoffs after 9 11. Uh, she eventually went back to the airport. And at the airport, it was at the World Club. You know, so you'd go, you'd go to take a flight somewhere and you get to hang out at the World Club. So that? That's like, well, the yeah. peasants go to the gate. But oh, the, that's where I'm going. Yeah, you could just go to the gate. Or you, or you could go to Taco Bell or you go to Chick fil A. You go there. <laughs> get yourself a Starbucks. You hey, go, yeah. If you're a world club member, if you're a world club member, then you go into the, the glass doors and you go to the world club. Like the first class lounge. It's it's kind of a first class lounge, yeah. There's there's a smoking lounge in one of them, but you get you there's there's a there's a self serve bar, beer uh, and liquor. Up self serve. Oh, well, it used to be self serve. I don't know how it is today, but you can't to imagine it is now. <laughs> um, the only time I ever attempted to fly out as an adult, I went in there and I never got, actually got on a plane because when you fly stand you have to fly standby and non-rev and all of this other stuff in order to you basically don't have a reservation for a seat you just get yeah. on if there's availability so if you want to use you know employee passes or anything to fly which as as her son up until i was like 25 or something like that i could use her passes so, so i went in there and i never got on a plane yes. and i was expecting to get on a plane and i almost couldn't drive home dude i was like Oh, I've been in hanging out in this lounge all day. I'm <laughs> a cigarette smoker. I go in there, smoke cigarettes, and fucking couldn't smoke weed all day. They got rid of the little, yeah. They didn't even, I was going to smoke a joint in the smoking section uh, the in the smoking airport, smoking. and I couldn't find it in the terminal. Yes. I ended up going through. Most, yeah. most airports don't have smoking sections anymore. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. We did a layover in London one time, and I snuck off to the smoking cube, and 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 like I'm surprised that I was able to sneak off to this one. It was I just was like I'm gonna go look at the record shop or something like that. And what is that? That's uh, uh Heathrow Heathrow Airport, I think is I think it's Heathrow Airport. That was uh uh, and it was just after the subway bombings over there. So this was. God, what year was this? This was, uh, I don't know, whatever, 10, 20. This would have been 20 years ago this year, I believe. I think I was 19. The year of the Great Blizzard. And, and, and <laughs> so the subway bombings happened. So, like, there, it was weird. You had Heathrow Airport, and, like, we're hanging out at the airport for, like, eight hour, eight hour layover. We can't leave the airport Dude. because the subways are all shut down. All the train service to in and out of London are all shut down. So we're basically stuck at the airport and all the guards and everybody's walking around with like AK 47s and shit. And it was like, there was like military at the airport. It was wild. It's like um, New York city subways right now. Yeah. 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 And, and the, um, and, and getting out of there was, that wasn't bad, but my longest flight was a 13 hour flight, the 13 and a half hour flight, um, nonstop to Beijing from Detroit to Beijing. And that's not around the globe, but up and over. Up and over the North Pole, and it's probably twice as long going around. Did you look down? It looks look look down. No, they don't. They don't. They actually put a force field below you, so you're not allowed to see what's Santa Claus. (laughs) (laughs) If you look, they throw you out the plane around his area. But yeah, that was the longest. I'm so curious, what's up there? That's odd. That's weird. So that would be that would have to prove to you that was a rounded Earth, huh? Because you went over the. (laughs) So well, guess, according to map, according to map, the map, the map, the map <laughs> was, you know, oh, the Lord. Display. and dude, this is 1998, so the airplane's this big on the little digital map that's this big. So you're like on that's a that's true. airplane flying across, and every every like hour <laughs> and a half, it goes all big chunk for it. Yeah, jumps. <laughs> all of a sudden, you're on the other side of Canada. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was a flat map. It was a it was a flat map at the time, yeah. <laughs> I did a uh, 
a full 24 hour trip to Bangkok. Oh, oh. and we Jeez. went from Detroit to Chicago. And then, like you're saying, from Chicago up over like bottom tip of Alaska to Nakrita, Japan, and then over to Bangkok. And so, even from Japan to Bangkok was like eight and a half hours. It was insane. Were you able to leave the airport? Like, at least no, no. I sat there and drank a Japanese beer and had sushi, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, what else are you gonna do? You know? No, man. Like, like you got eight hours. Maybe depending on where the airport is, is the thing. No, no, the the layover wasn't that long. The flight was. The layover uh, wasn't. Yeah, yeah, no, including layovers, it was 24 hours, but I don't think I ever had a layover over like three hours, maybe two and a half, something like that. It wasn't crazy, Uh, but it was 24 hours of travel. Layover in in London. Eight Eight hours hours is a long time. Yeah, it it really is. We We wanted to catch a nap somewhere. Without a a bed, yeah. Seriously. I can knock out a nap in eight hours, but you gotta bring like some camping gear so you got one of those like inflatable (laughs) mattresses or something. Yeah, Yeah. you just put it up in the airport. (laughs) I've seen it, dude. I've seen it. We we came home from London one year. Uh the 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 only other time I I, we actually didn't travel to London. That was a layover in (laughs) time I went to London. I went to England. Tell us about it. They came home the day of the blackout. And so Customs wasn't didn't have power at Detroit. Detroit that was 2003. So they just held you. We flew in. No, we had to fly to Minneapolis to go through customs, and then we had to lay over Minneapolis. And of course, we didn't get on any of those flights because so many fucking people were being laid over. So we ended up spending like another extra. We didn't, we had to like lay over until the next morning in Minneapolis. Let's uh, talk. Let's the talk the, oh. the 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 Midwest blackout of 2003 tomorrow on the late sesh. Oh, the don't great. forget to talk about crisis lemonade. Oh, man. Crisis lemonade. All right, lemonade. everyone. Cheers. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night. See you tomorrow it's night. Keep growing, everybody.